As you know that the liturgical year is divided into three parts, A, B, and C. We are in A, year A. But if you come to church every day for three years, you would have read the whole Bible. But certainly you get the Gospels if you come to church every Sunday. This year, as I say, is the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew was writing to the Jewish community, so he wants to arrange his material to show that Jesus is the continuation of the covenant given to Moses. Jesus is the new Moses of the new covenant. Jesus has come not to do away with the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. The Sermon on the Mount is the new law and gives added depth to the commandments. The Beatitudes are attitudes of the disciple given to help one find the right path to the kingdom of God. If you really follow the way of the uh, Beatitudes, you will find out that that's how Christ lived. So you are to live as Christ's, as children of the Lord and uh, brothers and sisters of the Lord. Pope Benedict had a three volume work called Jesus of Nazareth. In his first volume, he wrote, when man begins to see and to live from God's perspective, when he is a companion of Jesus, then he lives by new standards and something of the eschaton, the reality to come, is already present. Jesus brings joy into the midst of affliction. The Beatitudes spoken with the community of Jesus' disciples and view are paradoxes. The standards of the world are turned upside down. The Beatitudes are the paradigm of model of disciples. As I say, Matthew is writing to the, Christ, to the Jewish community, so he wants to show that Jesus is the new Moses. Moses gave 10 commandments, and Jesus does the same, goes up on the mountain and gives the Beatitudes. So the Beatitudes are to take us beyond the 10 commandments. In today's gospel, Jesus says, come to me, all you who weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Your souls will find rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The gentle and humble heart in the Beatitudes is, Blessed are the meek. Pope Benedict goes on to write, There is an interconnection between the Old and the New Testament based on the word meek. We read, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious. He is humble, meek, and riding on an ass, and the colt of a, full of an ass. He will cut off the chariots from Ephraim. The battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This passage presents to us a poor king, a king whose role does not depend upon political or military right, might. His inmost being is humility and meekness before God and men. And this he is the exact opposite of the great kings of the world. He is the king of peace and of God's power, not his own. In our today's society, we are suffering from narcissism, self-centeredness. Pity these poor guys coming out of college now, facing a world most difficult. And when we interview those who are getting ready for marriage, we find that they're terribly self-centered. I don't know how you can be a good lover if you're self-centered. Unless you love yourself, that's it. But that kind of self-love is not the love that we should have for ourselves. The love that we have for ourselves is recognizing the gift of God. We are a creature of God, created by God, continually being created. 
The scripture tells us to be perfect as our heavenly father is perfect. But the new translation is be perfected as your heavenly father is perfect, which means keep growing. God's not finished creating you. We eventually get to say, I can do everything God asks me with the help of Christ, who gives me the strength and the power. That's terribly opposite of self-centeredness. To be God-centered. To know God. To know God. I was thinking of the coat of arms of Cardinal Cushing. Ut cognascant te, that they may know you. It comes from the Gospel of John. This is the eternal life, that they may come to know you. Every day we should, in our meditations, come to know Jesus even more and more, so that we are companions of the Lord.